Afternoon all. I had a video yesterday with a record number of dislikes. And as a chess player, I think somehow the current like and dislike system seems a bit primitive. For a start, I mean, on my channel, I don't usually even mention about, uh, you know, if you like the video, please press like at the end of it. I haven't really, been, really been doing that. That would bias the results. So it's open to bias. And if someone doesn't like you, of course, they might even be able to create multiple accounts and, and press dislike, etc. So it's open to manipulation either way, either favorably or unfavorably. Now, in the past, a lot of my videos were, you know, were, were often four to five stars. So I was a bit surprised, perhaps disheartened. So I'm thinking this morning, and it occurred to me why, well, reading last night on my iPhone, actually, I checked why YouTube went from the five star system to the like and dislike system. Apparently, from my understanding, if someone liked a video, they would put five stars. If someone disliked it, they would put one. If they were neutral about it, then free. But free was sort of like seen pointless. You know, you either liked or disliked a video. Hence this kind of simplification we have now. The thing is, chess as a game has had the ELO rating system since 1970. It's been a successfully, successfully proven system, being able to rank player strength. And it has three case scenarios, basically. You either win a game of chess, you draw a game of chess, or you lose a game of chess. It would seem to me that in the five-star scenario, the reason that the draw, which would represent three, right in the middle of one and five, the draw would be pointless because the YouTube members themselves don't have an ELO rating. The videos don't have an ELO rating. Imagine a world in which this video had an ELO rating. Someone new to YouTube would have a rating of 1400 and, you know, a low K factor, uh, which would mean that if they won or, or, or lost, if the, if the video won them over or it was lost on them, let's use some different terminology, then it shouldn't really affect that video's rating as much as, say, an experienced 2500 who, say, uploaded loads of videos, contributed or in other ways to the YouTube community, um, you know, done lots of uh, nice uh, constructive reviews. Say a 2500 likes a video, then that video's rating should have the highest K factor. Now, there are a few questions when presenting this video. Like, what am I talking about with K-Factors or the, or the FIDE system or chess? Well, first of all, in chess, the FIDE uh, is the world governing body of chess. Here on the FIDE site, you can see the top 100 players in the world and their ratings. And these ratings are fluctuating all the time. And you can click in and you can actually see there's almost a dynamic real-time uh, calculation of what their ratings will be. Um, and you can see like rating histories as well. You can get full reports historically based on the number of games which they played. And you know, you can hover over here and this is all on the FIDE site. The FIDE system makes use of a version of ELO with a bit more complexity. Now the ELO rating system is documented on Wiki. And the, the actual mathematical formulas are all shown on Wiki. There's a bit of maths to it, but even on Chess World, my own site, I've you know I've managed uh, to implement a basic ELO system. Um, okay, now this ELO system, believe it or not, historically uh, was actually the basis of an early prototype version of Facebook called the Hot or Not. Apparently, according to the Facebook the movie, Hot or Not had underneath it an ELO. Um, kind of system where one girl was compared to another. I know it's terrible, superficial comparisons, but basically they were winning, drawing or losing the free case scenarios and the ELO system formulas were put into the hot or not system, which was the basis of, of Facebook. And I think someone's mentioned that in um, a, a video actually on, on YouTube which I doubt that I'll, I'll be able to find here, actually. Um, Facebook ELO rating, hot or not. I, I'm not sure I'm going to be able to find it. Um, I think someone's talked about it here. 
So ELO rating system for face mash social network. Someone someone wrote about it there, talked about it a little bit. Uh, now that was when there was a pair of competitors, if you check out this video, and hot or not, you know, one goal was either winning, drawing, or losing to the other. So both their ratings were being dynamically adjust, adjusted. My proposal basically is, you know, if a member, any member of YouTube has their own ELO rating, when they go to a video, we, we bring back the free case scenarios, which really the old five star rating had of win, draw, lose. Those are the essential case scenarios that all chess players since 1970 have been using success successfully in the ELO rating system. So, okay, this might sound revolutionary, but it's also kind of historically back to basics, the, the, the start of the prototype of Facebook, the hot or not used ELO. ELO, you know, is done by Professor ELO, um, you know, uh, a mathematical professor. It's got great credibility. Um, and, you know, uh, it's been adopted by many, many uh, chess authorities as well. Okay, so I hope there's, there's some food for thought here. Now, here's an example from my own site. I, I've got um, this, uh, this account, Pod1000, uh, he's got a rating of 742, and if his opponent, right, um, is 695, if he won, he'd know he'd become 760. If he lost, he'd know he'd become 720. So it's possible to even do, you know, rating predictions. Many servers have these rating predictions. Now imagine a YouTube viewer has a rating of 7, you know, 42 or something. Again, you know, it's easy to do calculations. If the w video won them over, then the video's rating, you know, would, would be reduced or increased. And, and, and it doesn't, obviously, it doesn't, rating the video or not doesn't have to affect their own rating uh, maybe they they can increase their own rating through contributions to the youtube community so in that way it's also positive to encourage people to be more engaged with youtube not just passively view videos but you know rate them put comments you know upload videos you know share stuff which is what youtube's about you know the community so i think it's an interesting idea I hope I've expressed some of the main points which I've set out here that the ELO rating system used in chess since 1970 could actually be used to revolutionize the YouTube and currently the Facebook systems because Facebook seems to have the like without the dislike. They've removed the dislike option. So currently Facebook and YouTube are slightly different and this move to a mathematical approach might actually be fairer so it would handle things like brand new people to youtube or people creating multiple accounts if those multiple accounts all start off at a provisional 1400 they're not going to do too much damage to any videos rating if people get more and more established to get a higher more established rating past the provisional period then they're going to influence videos more and more and you can get videos then ordered by FIDE rating, like the players in chess are ordered by FIDE rating, you could have videos ordered by FIDE rating. So I hope this is an exciting idea. Obviously, it's just an idea I just wanted to put out, out there. And if anyone up there in YouTube likes it, I hope so, you know. All right, that will be cool uh, for consideration. I'd be honored if this idea was considered at some point or even just discussed in this video. Okay, comments or questions on YouTube. If you hate the video, of course, Use the dislike. If you like it, use the like. Okay. But until we get the FIDO rating system, then, then we've got serious a serious rating system. Okay, thanks very much.